Hello and welcome everyone. This is Benam with a quick illustration on value at risk using variance covariance approach which is also known as parametric VAR or analytical VAR. Now my local students will be able to find these materials through blackboard but students abroad may find it convenient to obtain these materials from banks and markets for which you just need to click finance and then inside there you will see the slides as well as the data file now in order to illustrate the computation what i need is the the raw data which is basically the share price and what i have done here is downloaded the share price using yahoo finance basically i went to yahoo finance uh, yahoo finance uh, hong kong and then i clicked uh, i typed in hang seng index um, and uh, inside the Hang Seng Index, uh, it provides you the list of constituent members somewhere. Uh, that's what you need to find. And then inside there, from inside there, uh, summary uh, from inside there somewhere you find the list of all uh, 30 constituent members and i have randomly found five companies uh, and then downloaded uh, the data using the historical price uh, tab available inside uh, those stocks. So that's how the data have been obtained. Of course, I've taken the data from 2015, 28th October, all the way down to 27 October 2020. That's the share price data. Now I need to compute the VR using the variance covariance approach, which then basically means. I need all this uh, in this formula. So here you will see that uh, this first component is the portfolio return. And then here I've got Z alpha, which is the Z score for the confidence interval basically when it is let's say 95% confidence interval then 95% of the time the market will be normal but 5% is uncertain therefore 5% becomes the uncertainty probability for which I need to find out the Z score which is something I can do just by typing equal norms inv open bracket this uncertainty probability and i get that number so that's something i can do for all confidence intervals so that z is easy this is the investment amount the investment amount is one million that's what i have assumed and then the the this p is basically the 1 million amount which is principal investment and then z alpha is there now average return is easy to compute it's i just need to find out the return for individual stocks then i can multiply the individual stock return with the weights and that way i can find the average return which i will be showing you very soon so then the only difficult bit is the volatility and for this i'll be applying the variance covariance approach so you will see very quickly that this can be accomplished so first thing first is to find out the 
return given by each individual stocks for which I'm applying the continuous compounding ln natural log new share price divided by old share price that gives me the return that way I have been able to copy and paste it for all five companies and also when I double click here it is now giving me the return for all time period next I can find portfolio return of course I need the weights of my investment and for convenience I'm saying 20% on each so that for five companies it is 100% in terms of amount as well I'm saying 1 million let's say Hong Kong dollar Hong Kong dollar in total therefore the individual stock investment is 200,000 and this 20% ratio is what I want to maintain so with that in mind what I can do is equal some product in order to find out my portfolio return for this particular day would be all the weights of investment and I can lock this now comma the rate of return of all these five stocks so some product function will therefore multiply the weight with the return of each individual companies and then we'll add them together and therefore I have the portfolio return for the day and I can simply now copy it down so I have portfolio return uh, for all these time periods next what I can do is I can find the average here which will therefore be the daily portfolio return so I can just highlight all these areas so I have found the portfolio return which is not one not three one percent this is daily so therefore it this number is reasonable now I will just copy it across again I can lock this so that I can copy it over for all confidence interval so this average return has been accomplished this here is the volatility or standard deviation is what I can type now that is something uh, I need to find next and therefore here first I'll find the standard deviation of individual stocks which is equal stdev dot s open bracket and then this is for Hong Kong and China gas which is in column G in my worksheet and that's what I have achieved now I'm going to copy this and paste it for all stocks I know this is not correct therefore I will now change the this G to hatch so that it captures for the second company which is galaxy entertainment and this time g to ghi so that it captures for china mobile here that's done and this will be j and this is also capturing innovation and technology and finally i have k and that's taking AIA I'm assuming I believe this is an insurance company uh, so that's a standard deviation done individually and you can see in this formula I need weights times standard deviation in fact uh, the, the this form weight times standard deviation weight times standard deviation, second third four five so I've got five five rows here so I can simply multiply these and therefore I have obtained them now the next hurdle which is to find out the correlation matrix there are different ways uh, to find the correlation matrix but the one that many students find it easy to adapt is simply apply the correl function and then go to Hong Kong and China gas and again this is the correlation with the same 
company Hong Kong and China gas therefore the answer should be 1 or 100 percent so that's what we have received here this basically means the Hong Kong and China gas correlation with itself will be equal to 1 now before copying it across what you would need to do is lock the cell here by pressing F4 and that is something you can do just by pressing F4 or in some computer you may need to press Fn and function and F4 and secondly I would like to request you to lock the number here which is put a dollar symbol in front of it and put a dollar symbol again here and that basically means you have locked the rows here you've locked both the rows and columns here now you copy it across that will be fine but when you copy it down it doesn't work because you know the one should appear in diagonals so it the one should have been here and so on so what you therefore need to do here is this time change this to hatch so change this to hatch so that you are taking the company galaxy not hong kong china gas and now if you paste it you will see it works you are getting one in diagonal now what you can therefore do is copy it across again make sure that this time it is not hatch but i so that's the small uh, job that you need to do and therefore you get one each time in diagonal again ghi is what I, you have done so after i it will be j which is the fourth company in the list and now just copy it across and finally this is the last that you need to change which is k and therefore you have now obtained your correlation matrix now basically the job is to apply the matrix algebra here so you basically need to apply functions such as transpose and multiplication so first thing you you may like to see that this matrix here is five rows one column and this matrix here the correlation is five rows five columns so you will see that you are not able to multiply these two by the rule of the matrix because the one here doesn't match the five here so what you can do is transpose it transpose this matrix which is in yellow so equal transpose is what you can do and close bracket once you close you control shift enter so first highlight all and then type in transpose take all that control shift enter will give you this now this one row five columns as written here so you can see the end number five and the beginning number five is same this means the transposed matrix can multiply the correlation matrix so again find out the place where your answer will appear then type in equal mmult that way you will be able to multiply this matrix with the matrix in blue i.e. the correlation matrix each time you close parenthesis press ctrl shift enter together now you know this is also one by five matrix one row five columns are here and here you can see is five rows and one column this five in the end and this five in the beginning they match 
and therefore you can multiply and the result matrix is one here and one here which means the result in one cell so equal mmult open bracket this matrix can therefore multiply the matrix in yellow close bracket control shift enter so that's how you have now received variance okay and as you saw in the in the slide as well this way you can obtain v for variance here in order to find out the volatility i.e standard deviation you need to take the square root of it so once you are happy and used to the computation of transpose and matrix multiplication in fact what you can do is you can simply uh, get this answer of not point not 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 one five eight three five six in one step for which you just need to do equal and mult that's multiplying again multiplying multiplying the transposed matrix so therefore the transpose is for this and that is going to multiply the transpose is going to multiply the correlation matrix and the result matrix will then multiply this matrix again and that's your answer control shift enter so they the same so just to say to you that uh, although we took some steps to come to this point here it could have been done quickly but those of you who needed some brush up uh, with the matrix algebra i thought it would be useful to show you step by step anyway we have now the standard deviation of the portfolio and that's what you need here which is this place so equal i will now take this value here which is the square root of the variance so standard deviation is there and i will now take this for all the confidence interval levels so you see it is the same number now let's find the very variance covariance approach given we are in percentage so that's the formula will apply here but without uh, the p which is principal or without the one million value so equal minus mu is average return which is this plus z alpha is this number times the sigma p which is volatility of the portfolio which is this so that's how you can compute the variance covariance given we are in percentage if you need to find it in dollar just multiply 1 million with this and you get the number in dollars now you can see that we have computed the uh, we have computed the uh, let me see if it has been done correctly it is in minus it should not be in minus because minus is already there in the formula so let me see if i have done implied the formula correctly equal minus mu which is this average return plus you have the z score times your standard deviation so the answer now is positive so that's correct so everything now is correct so we found variance covariance given var which for 95 percent you can see is 20392 the final job is to compare what you found using variance covariance method with the result obtained from other methods such as historical simulation and monte carlo simulation and that's something i've already done here between monte carlo simulation and historical simulation the job is just to put the values from uh, that obtained using the variance covariance approach which is this for 90 percent and i can copy it across and you will see that the results let's say for 95 percent are similar to each other so that's what you have obtained so you can say that at 95 percent confidence interval the 
VAR value at risk given by three methods are these numbers and they are similar to each other therefore we can say that within the next one day period when the investment amount is 1 million uh, let's say Hong Kong dollar then the maximum that could be lost at 95% confidence interval will be around approximately 20,000. So thank you very much for your time and thank you very much for watching and listening.